Welcome to First Steps to Al-Anon Recovery from Al-Anon Family Groups. Today we are pleased to have with us Jerry Moe, National Director of Children's Programs at the Betty Ford Center, a part of Hazleton Betty Ford Foundation in Rancho Mirage, California. He is here with us to talk about the effects of a parent's or other loved one's drinking on their children. Jerry is an author, lecturer, and trainer on issues for children and families affected by addiction. The Hazleton Betty Ford Foundation is the nation's largest nonprofit treatment provider. Jerry, thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be with you. Jerry, with nearly 17 million adults in the United States having alcohol use disorders, how concerned should we be about the children who are exposed to this drinking on a regular basis? Very concerned. What we know is that one out of every four children in the United States today is growing up in a family, and they love someone who suffers from the disease of alcoholism. And this disease, insidious disease, is characterized by denial, silence, secrecy, and shame. And so many of these boys and girls are silent and invisible. We know that alcoholism tends to run in families. So it's the boys and girls who are growing up in families where alcoholism is present today that are at high risk for developing this disease as they grow and develop. And then it's the next generation, and then the one after that. And where does this stop? Now, there was a study done, the ACE study, Adverse Childhood Experiences. And the study wanted to look at how early childhood trauma has an impact on a person's physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual development throughout the life trajectory. And look at how early childhood adverse experiences you know, really can compromise health and well-being as boys and girls grow and develop. And one of the things that they included in their study was looking at boys and girls who grow up in families where there's alcoholism because often it's just not the alcoholism, it's the family conflict, it's the verbal violence, it's the child maltreatment, it's the accompanying mental health difficulties, it's divorce and separation. All of those things together put our children at risk, at undue risk, and with help, we can see that these boys and girls can go from being children at risk to children of promise. Thank you. What do you believe constitutes an effective approach to providing help for children who are affected by a loved one's drinking? Now, what a good question. And boy, we could take this in so many different directions. But let me just keep it simple today. I look at three important things for Program specifically for boys and girls growing up in families that have been challenged and hurt by alcoholism. Number one, programs need to provide information, accurate, solid, age-appropriate information. Boys and girls need to learn that alcoholism is a disease. And in both the Al-Anon and Alateen programs, boys and girls, teenagers, family members learn the three C's. I didn't cause the alcoholism. I can't control it and I can't cure it. Also, boys and girls need to learn that they're not alone. And that's the sad irony, I believe. One out of every four kids in the United States, and yet so many think and believe they're the only one contending with this problem. So information is critical. Second, skill building. And in Alateen, boys and girls, teenagers learn a variety of skills, communication skills, problem-solving skills, ways to positively cope and take good care of themselves. They develop listening skills. They deepen emotional intelligence and really get a sense of hope. And so in Alateen, they can build skills that can serve them for the rest of their lives in all aspects of their lives. So skill building is number two. So we've got information skill building. And the third one is bonding and attachment. You know, something to be said about a sense of belonging, a sense of deep connection, you know, feeling a part of something. And when grown-ups sit in a room where there's an Al-Anon meeting or teenagers are in an al meeting, they report back to me on a regular basis. That sense of camaraderie, hope, a sense of belonging. And I believe these are key spiritual aspects that deepen one's healing from this awful disease. 
And when it comes to information, skill building, and bonding and attachment, Alateen does this so very well. Wow. Thank you very much. Okay. What kind of direction would you give to the non-drinking parent of a child who is being affected by the other parent's drinking problem? I think the answer that I'm going to give will surprise people sometimes because, again, there's a bit of irony here in that I'm a firm believer if you want to help your children, begin by helping yourself. Get help for yourself first. Go to an Al-Anon meeting. Read literature on alcoholism and how it is a family disease. Read literature on recovery. If need be, talk to a professional who understands not only the essence of this problem, but also the steps that people can take in order to recover and have happy, serene, successful lives. Research has been done through the years, and research that focused on this, fascinating research actually, we know children and family members get hurt by this cunning, powerful, and baffling disease. That's why we call it a family disease. It takes everyone in the family hostage. But there's been some research done on what are some of the factors that can diminish the adverse impact of alcoholism on children. And boy, would a parent, the non-addicted parent, want that kind of information. So what are the factors that can lessen the impact? And at the top of the list is the relationship that boys and girls have to the non-addicted parent. If this parent truly understands and is working their own recovery program, they can explain things to their children that are happening in the family system. They can explain the alcoholism and how it's not the kid's fault. And no matter what those teens might want to do, they can't stop this disease, that it's really up to the alcoholic to seek help. That non-addicted parent can reassure and can see that the family goes on with its functioning even if the alcoholic parent isn't there or isn't always available on a consistent basis. You know, that the family goes on and they celebrate holidays and birthdays and rituals and cultural events and rites of passage, that the family just continues to go on. And, you know, a prayer often said in Al-Anon and al meetings is a serenity prayer. And I think that really sums up what we're talking about. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. I can't change that person who has alcoholism. I just can't change it. Can't change it at all. Courage to change the things I can. And through the Al-Anon program, a non-addicted parent learns the focus needs to be on self, on their own attitudes and their own actions and their own steps that they're taking in a proactive way to heal from this disease and the wisdom to know the difference. So want to help your kids begin by getting help for yourself first. And then, as available, see that your children begin to get help through 12-step programs like Alatine. That's interesting that it's the non-drinking parent that needs to get help for themselves in order to help their kids. Very interesting. What would you say to the parent who has initial reservations about their child participating in a program of recovery from another's drinking, such as Alateen? Well, I think I'd begin by saying I completely understand where that parent is coming from and that parents always want to do best by their kids. And keep in mind, again, this is a disease Claudia Black taught us best. She is a pioneer in working with children and families. And Claudia has said that growing up in a family where there's alcoholism, family members learn three things. Don't talk, don't trust, and don't feel. And so it's out of the ordinary to talk about these family problems. And let's face it, even though times have changed and it's 2015, there's still a certain amount of stigma attached to this disease. And yet I'd hope that that parent would look upon getting help for themselves, as we just talked about, but also getting help for their children. To look upon doing so as an opportunity for healing for everyone in the family and to become an essential and integral part of the solution and not part of the problem. But I understand the reluctance. What I would suggest is for a person who's considering getting help for their kids to call the Al-Anon 24-7 meeting line number. So if they were to call 1-888-425-2666, let me repeat that again. It's 1-888-425-2666. 666. And this again is Al-Anon's 24-hour meeting line number. And they can find out about 
meetings that are in their own local community, and also Alateen meetings that are in their own local community. I would suggest that parent who is a bit resistant or reluctant, what I would suggest is they go to an Alateen meeting at the end of the meeting. And please keep in mind that often, in many communities, Al-Anon meetings and Alateen meetings run concurrently. You know, convenience for the whole family to get some help at the same time. All Alateen groups are led by a sponsor, a member of Al-Anon, who helps to guide the teenagers and make sure they stay on track as they're doing their meetings. I'd ask that parent to talk to the sponsor to get a sense of how young people are finding help, hope, and healing. Try a couple of meetings see how that goes. That is great advice. Jerry, what are some good ways for a young adult to use the tools they have gained in Alateen as they transition into adulthood? What I truly believe is either we use those tools or we lose them. Use them or lose them. And so teenagers who've gone to Alateen and who have really developed some good life skills and a sense of purpose and future and hope in their lives and some great skill building, they need to build on those skills or they lose them. And the only example that I can give is, I'm not even going to tell you how many years of French I took in school. And other than French bread and French fries, I can't say any French words simply because I didn't practice. And as Alateens transition into adulthood, they need to continue to practice the skills. I would really encourage them to consider becoming an Alateen sponsor. Now, sponsoring a group of teens, being that leader, that advisor that's there to make sure that the group stays on track and that the teens are really working the principles of the program. Something to be said about being a sponsor, so that might be a really good thing for them to do. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for talking with us about the effects of a parent's or other loved one's drinking on their children. And thank you, everyone, for listening to First Steps to Al-Anon Recovery. You are welcome to listen to any of the Al-Anon Family Group podcasts at alanon.org. You are also welcome to attend a face-to-face meeting of Al-Anon Family Groups in your own community by clicking on How to Find a Meeting or by calling 1-888-4-Al-Anon. That's 1-888-425-2666. Thank you for listening to First Steps to Al-Anon Recovery from Al-Anon Family Groups.